Let's continue this exploration of the aggregate demand aggregate supply model by moving to long run aggregate supply. Remember, in the long run, we said that real GDP does not depend on the price level. The reason being is that there's input costs and there's output prices. Both of those are prices. So prices are going to adjust in the long run, meaning that no matter what the price level is, we're always gonna be at the level of potential GDP, which I'll denote as Y sub P. That's why we say that my long run aggregate supply is vertical, meaning that any level of price here, 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 they are all associated with the same level of potential GDP. Now we could see long run aggregate supply increase or decrease if there's a shock to the economy anything that changes overall potential GDP. Remember those three things that we talked about that can change potential GDP. Change in inputs, so you've got capital or labor, the change in technology, or better economic institutions. All of these things impact our solo model that we talked about in the growth chapters and will also change our overall potential GDP. We'd see an increase, just like with aggregate demand, as a shift to the right, so you could see an increase by shifting it to the right, where we'd see a higher level of potential GDP, or you could see a decrease, which would be a shift to the left, where we'd see a lower level of potential GDP. So all three of these are representing three different long-run aggregate supply curves, shifting to the right, shifting to the left. The key thing you need to know about long-run aggregate supply is that the output does not depend on the price level in the long run, which is why it's vertical.